been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Captain Joy Foster, and the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out, and this is part 291. Now, this is section D of a multi-part instruction. The only ones who have the right to claim preeminent domain is Elohim. And all those who have been called and elected to inherit and to inhabit the earth. And that's every member of the body of Christ. Build your capacity to receive the exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think through the word of God and the spirit of God. Now our first section I will address. You were fearfully and wonderfully made by Elohim created in his image and in his likeness, you can do what he can do when you partner with him in the earth. Now we're going to take a look at Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th through the 28th verses from the King James Version. This is, and God said, and this is Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit. And it says, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the likeness of God created he him male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So let's look at this word image in the Hebrew and it means a representative figure. That means we are able to be illustrative of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's also look at the word likeness in the Hebrew, and it means to be fashioned like. Again, Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Genesis, the second chapter, the seventh verse from the Amplified Bible says, Then the Lord God formed, that is, created the body of man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, which is the soul, and the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. So when we define ourselves, actually we are a spirit with a soul in a body. Now, the footnote for that scripture says the word formed is actually in Hebrew, created. It also has a footnote that says the essential chemical elements found in soil are also found in humans and animals. This scientific fact was not discovered until recent times, but God is displaying it here. Now, when you look at what dirt is made of, and this is from the homefortheharvest.com, it says dirt is a mix of tiny rocks, decayed organisms, 
living organisms, air and water. The rocks, mineral grains in soil have a variety of different chemical elements in their makeup, including oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, and sodium. The living or former living portions of dirt is carbon-based. And even if you look on the back of a vitamins, it'll tell you what the contents are so that we can be replenished with those because those are in our body. So you could just see that everything that's in the Bible can be validated that God created man and woman and that you are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made by Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit, that you were created in his image and in his likeness and that you can do what he can do when you partner with him in the earth. What is the recurring theme we like to share with you throughout the program? Recognize you are heavenly, endorsed, and reinforced by the kingdom of God that is already within you. Always remain in a position of honor and humility before the Lord. Realize you are supernaturally endued with exousia, authority, and dunamis power. Release your God-given dominion to work in you at the fullest strength to govern the earth by faith. Recover all lost, stolen, and destroyed territory and take new ground. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section two. And I will address Elohim has already given you the earth to inherit and to inhabit. Because Elohim has preeminent domain. You share those same rights because of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Let's take a look at what the phrase mean imminent domain now this is what they use in the earth for our government whether it's local to international and there is a description that says it is a right of a government to take private property for use for public use by virtue of the superior dominion of the sovereign power over all lands within its jurisdiction I recall that I was watching a department actually working with the government as well as working with those who would be affected by it. The government wanted to expand the freeway and they needed to have the private property that was adjacent to the freeway. And how the department came in and worked with those businesses and entities who were on that street to help them move their property. They did not have a right to stay there because they were exercising eminent domain. But they moved the property, they paid the property, they moved them where they want to go, but they had to go. Now let's also look at this word preeminent domain from the Cambridge Dictionary Online says preeminent means more important or powerful than all others. And also in the dictionary.com says it's imminent above and before 
others superior, surpassing. And then the word domain from the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, it says domain means dominion, empire. It's under the government of a sovereign. It is a possession in a state as well. So when you're looking at preeminent domain, it is surpassing all others with the dominion that they have. Now let's also look in the scripture where it shows what belongs to God, belongs to Christ, belongs to you. In 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 21st through the 23rd verses from the expanded Bible says, so you should not brag, boast about human leaders, people. All things belong to you. That word belong means own and therefore you're able to occupy it. Paul, Apollos, and Peter. The world, life, death, the present, and the future all belong to you. And you belong to Christ. And Christ belongs to God. Let's also look at the same passages from the Living Bible. It says, so don't be proud of following the wise men of this world because that would be the wisdom of the world. For God has already given you everything you need he has given you Paul and Apollos and Peter as your helpers. He has given you the whole world to use and life and even death as your servants. He has given you all of the present and all of the future. And you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Now let's look in Psalm 115th division, the 12th through the 16th verse from the message translation, it goes further and it says, Oh God, remember us and bless us. Bless the families of Israel and Aaron. And let God bless all who fear him. Bless the small, bless the great. Oh, let God enlarge your families, giving growth to you, growth to your children. May you be blessed by God, by God who made heaven and earth. The heaven of heavens is for God, but he put us in charge of the earth. Now let's look in the King James Version, the last two verses, that would be Psalm 115, the 15th and 16th verse. And it says, ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. So when you look at heaven, this is the third heaven, which is the abode of God. And that belongs to God. He is a self-existing one. And that is where he resides. But the earth he has given to us. And this earth would be considered the land, the whole earth, the territory, the countries, the earth inhabitants, the underworld. All this belongs to the men and women that's in the earth. And it says he has given. Let's explore this word in Hebrew. For given means to employ, to pay wages, to sell, to exchange, to lend, to commit, to entrust, to yield produce, to appoint, to designate, to stretch out, to extend to be entrusted to, be published, and to appoint, and to bestow, which means to bequeath as it is an inheritance. And so now we have to understand this, that what he has given to us all men. So we want to make sure that we're using it for the purposes of kingdom of God. Because there's some people who are taking the land that they would own, but they're not using it for the glory of God, nor the good of men, but it is for destruction. So our job then is to bring the world system into the kingdom of God until it is all there and belong to Christ and belong to God. Now in our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of D. White as he presents my prayer, Rain. So what happens here is that this was so much of abundance of rain that he was employing God 
inviting him into his space to stop the rain. It was just too much like it was flooding. And so he knows he can partner with God. So he's going to pray that. So let's hear my prayer, rain, D. White. And I'll be right back after his song.
visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Thanks for staying tuned to the King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section three. And I will address, if someone gives you something too big, you may bring it down to your size rather than to raise it up where it belongs. That's why the Spirit of God and the Word of God must coach you to receive the exceeding, the abundantly above all that you can ask or even imagine. Owning and occupying the earth is in Jesus bloodline and since you're there it's in your bloodline too in first Samuel the second chapter the eighth verse from the King James Version says the Lord raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. So when we are seated in having places with Christ, we are at the throne of glory. So it doesn't matter where you begin. He says, in this case, they were poor, they were weak, they were low, they were beggar, they weren't want, they were needy. That's how they got their start, but that's not how God ended up with them. Let's also look in Psalm, the second chapter, the eighth verse from the King James verse says, Ask of me, this is God, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So he's even given you appeal to come to him with your quest for what he said you can already have. The exceeding, the abundantly above that you can ask or think. And then in Psalm, the 25th division, the 13th verse from the King James Version says, His soul shall dwell at ease. And his seed shall inherit the earth. So this seed is not only like your descendants, your offspring, but it could be your sowing time. So that's dealing with all the things that are around you, that the works of your hand. And then in Psalm, the 37th division, the ninth verse from the King James Verse says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth earth. So this wait here is waiting upon the Lord is we're looking for, we're hoping, we're expecting. Why? Because God is our source. He may use someone else to be the resource, but he is the source for everything that we need, desire, or even above that we can ask or think. And then in Psalm 37 division, the 11th Verse from the King James verse says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So then this is our posture before the Lord, that we are meek, that we are humble and lowly before him. So then he can show us the ropes. That doesn't mean that we're weak. It means that we are meek and our posture before him, that he is indeed our source. That means that he gets the credit for every success that we will have in this life. And then in Psalm, the 37th division to 22nd verse from the King James Version says, For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Well, he made us to be blessed. So we want to make sure that we don't turn the blessing he has for us into a curse. So then it says in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the fifth verse from the King James Version, these are the words of Jesus that blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. So now what is said in the Old Testament is also said in the New Testament as a confirmation from Jesus. And then in Romans, the eighth chapter, the 16th through the 18th verse from the Amplified Bible, the classic edition says, the Spirit himself, speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, thus testifies together with our own spirit. Remember, we are a spirit with a soul and a body, assuring us that we are children of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs or joint heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. 
We share Jesus' inheritance with him. Only we must share his sufferings if we are to share his glory. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. That means that we have bequeathed what God has for us. Now remember, always go to our blog so that you can get all the scriptures that we're using today for your own edification. And I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing. Not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is a section four. And I will address some of your assigned territory will be fertile and flourishing. Others are ruined and devastated. But you already know that Elohim can turn anything that looks like trash into treasure. Don't throw away the opportunity for God to use you to turn it around. Let's look in Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the eighth verse from the King James Version. It says, Thus saith the Lord, in acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause, to inherit the desolate heritage. Now let's also look where that scripture comes from in a greater context. And that is from Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the 7th through the 13th verses. And this will be from the voice translation. It says, this is what the eternal one, the redeemer and holy one of Israel told to the one who is despised and loathed by the nation, to the servant of national leaders. Eternal one says, at the sight of you, kings will rise and princes will fall down. For I, the eternal, faithful and true, the Holy One of Israel, have chosen you. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm chosen. In the name of Jesus, I am chosen to shine Jesus. This is the eternal has this to say. The eternal one says, when the time was right, I answered you. On the day you were delivered, I was your help. I will watch over you and give you a promise, a binding covenant to the people. Through you, my gift to the people, the land of promise will recover. Ancestral ground once deserted will be entrusted to them. Through you, my gift to the people, I will Declare to the prisoners, come out. Now you are free. To those who are held in darkness, come out into the light. And they will find substance wherever they are, along the roads or in the open hills, with peace of mind in comfort and security. Wherever they are, they will be fine, never hungry nor thirsty. They will be protected from oppressive heat and the burning sun because the Lord who loves them as a mother loves her child will be their guide. God will lead them to restful places, rejuvenating springs of water, and I will make their going easy. Level the mountain road and smooth the path that leads them home. Look, even now, they are coming from lands far away, some from the north, others from the west, these from the land of Shinim. Oh, joy, be glad, sky. Take 
joy earth, burst into song mountains for the eternal move to compassion has comforted and consoled his people. He's given us a vision of even scriptures like this we can use to enlarge our territory so we can have exactly what he says we can have, even though it might look desolate from the very beginning. Again, on our program, you're going to enjoy the music of D. White as he presents Army of God, Soldier. See, when we in the Lord's army, that means that there may be an area where we have to make sure that there is an impenetrable defense around it. And the only way we can do that is when God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help in a time of trouble. And so then we're inviting the Lord into any fight that there might be even over land development, over what belongs to us, what we are to inhabit because we inherit it. So let's hear Army of God, D. White, and I'll be right back. Strong in the Lord with the power of His might. I got His armor on and I'm ready to fight. I stand against Satan in this battle with sin. Against all evil forces of this world we live in. No weapon formed against me. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed with the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine. I'm more than a conqueror I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I have my waist right with the belt of truth I got my feet prepared for the gospel of peace And I got my breastplate of righteousness I got my shield of faith to protect me from the wicked one. No weapon form to get speed. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine, and I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a soldier. King's portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section five in our address. The scriptures confirm that Jesus Christ holds all the preeminence as the heir of all things in heaven and earth and under the earth. The name of Jesus alone is recognized and realized as 
surpassing all others. Because of God's succession plan, you have preeminent domain rights because you are in the family of God and you have the rights to use the name of Jesus. We're going to take a look in Colossians, the first chapter, the 12th through the 23rd verse from the Amplified Bible, the classic edition. Giving thanks to the Father who qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his Son of his love. Speaking of Jesus, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, speaking of Jesus, which means the forgiveness of our sins. And now Jesus is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. And it was in him, speaking of Jesus, that all things were created in heaven and on earth, things seen and things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities. All things were created and exist through him by his service, intervention, and in and for him. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist, that is, quote, here, are held together. Jesus also is the head of his body, the church, seeing he is the beginning and firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything, in every respect, might occupy the chief place, stand first and be preeminent. Stand first and be preeminent. For it pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, and attributes should dwell in him, speaking of Jesus, permanently. And God purposed that through the service and intervention of Jesus the Son, all things should be completely reconciled back to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, as through him the Father made peace by means of the blood of Jesus' cross. And although you at one time were estranged and alienated from him and were of a hostile attitude of mind in your wicked activities, yet now has Christ Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through death in order to present you holy and faultless and irreproachable in his, the Father's presence. And this he will do provided that you continue to stay with and in the faith in Christ, well grounded and settled and steadfast, not shifting or moving away from the hope which rests on and is inspired by the glad tidings, the gospel, which you heard and which has been preached as being designed for and offered without restrictions to every person under earth and of which gospel I, Paul, became a minister. See, Paul experienced God for himself. He was going the wrong way fast, trying to fight against the church. And he had experience on the road of Damascus, where he met Jesus face to face. And this was after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. And Jesus stopped him in the tracks that he was going the wrong way. And he gave him a turnaround so that he could be all that God had planned for him to be in the earth and that he showed us and through his writings to own and to occupy what God has given us. But you may not have that same position right now. And if you don't, you can be a part 
of the body of Christ, the newest member who has been created in Christ a second time around. So let's give yourself to the Lord, even this moment in time and ask him to come into your heart. Say, dear Heavenly father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of every sin and transgression and iniquity. And I honor the blood of Jesus Christ because I know it was his blood that was shed that gives me this opportunity. And I ask you to cleanse me from all wrongdoing and anything that was against you. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, be the Lord and be the Savior of my life. And I recognize that old things have passed away and behold, all things are new. And now I'm the newest creation in the body of Christ. And I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now, let's return to the many portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this sixth section, I will address the scriptures also verify that God bequeathed you as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Your born again experience recreated you in Christ Jesus. Now you have the express opportunity to honorably and humbly present the best version of you on earth. Go on and turn the world upside down, which is really right side up in the kingdom of God. So let's take our first scripture from Ephesians, the second chapter, the 10th verse. And this is from the message translation. It says, now God has us where he wants us with all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. And all we do is to trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we've done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has already gotten ready for us to do, work we better be doing. Then that same verse, Ephesians, the second chapter, the 10th verse from the Amplified Bible, the classic edition says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which he predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. And then also we're going to look in Ephesians, the first chapter, the 17th through the 21st verse from the Amplified Bible, the class edition, because this will show us that we need to search God out, seek him out and study him so that we can receive the exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think because we need to have his vision first before we have the provision he has for us. And it says, for I always pray to God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious 
inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones. So this hope is the expectation, the anticipation of the vision that he has for us, that we make it real in our lives, one word at a time. And so that you can know and understand what is immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred not only in this age and in this world but also in the age and in the world which are to come so we are to be partakers of christ and we see even from that scripture that not only that jesus is seated at the right hand of the father on high but we have a seat next to jesus on high where we're actually in two locations on earth and then in heaven where we can actually be in the presence of the lord as we are communing together because we can do all things through christ which strengthen us and we can do nothing without him well how would we like to leave this program today enlarge your territory to bring heaven to earth enlarge your heart to receive god's vision and provision enlarge your mouth over the enemy and give him no room to cause any division make it impossible for satan to ever breach your property line be a triple threat that employs number one the word of God, both locals and rhema. Number two, the blood of the lamb. And number three, the name of Jesus. This is Catherine Joy Foster for King's Portion, where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.